Well, it's nice to speak with you today, Vijay. Um, and I'd like to hear your views on tracking multimodal passive assets. Um, but before we start, can you provide a brief background of yourself? Uh, okay, my name is Vijay Parmar. I am the CEO of a company uh, called Result Corporation. That's spelled R-E-Z-O-L-T. Uh, I have been in technology for the last 25 years, uh, last 10, 12 years in Internet of Things and machine-to-machine -machine communications, uh, starting with a company called Gainspan, where we invested in a Wi-Fi solution for embedded uh, devices, uh, what was called wireless sensor networks at the time, and now known as Internet of Things. Uh, and as a result, we are building system products and solutions for uh, Internet of Things and machine-to-machine -machine communications, focusing on wireless connectivity. And that sounds that's interesting. <clears throat> Can you um, talk first about what is involved with tracking multimodal passive assets? So let me uh, just start with explaining a couple of key words in, in that term. So we have coined this uh, term called multimodal passive asset management uh, for a specific category of assets and a specific type of tracking. So passive in this term um, implies an asset that is unpowered or it doesn't have ready access to line power. So this contrasts with uh, fleet management where you have units that uh, sit inside a truck cabin with ready access to DC power. So uh, they're always on. Uh, they have uh, sufficient power when uh, the vehicle is being, uh, is being driven. Uh, contrast that with assets like uh, shipping containers, truck trailers, rail cars, that don't have access to easy power. So that's um, that's passive. Uh, multimodal is a term that's used a lot in, in transportation and logistics as in assets that go from ships to trains to trucks um, and so mode of transportation. We expand that to also include other modes, other states. So for example, whether the container is locked or unlocked, whether the temperature inside the uh, the container is is too high or too low, so sensors, uh, shock, um, lock status, all of those are in our mind modes. And so, when you talk about multimodal passive asset management, you're talking about tracking passive assets through several different types of uh, modes that they go through. What are some of the challenges involved? So the biggest challenge is, is the passive aspect of these assets. They don't have line power access, and so they must run on batteries. Um, it's possible in some cases to use rechargeable batteries, but those present uh, their own challenges because you have to have line power to recharge the battery. And uh, the good news is that many of these assets don't need to be tracked in real time. So as an in, in-cabin unit that's used for tracking a truck um, needs to send location and other data very frequently, maybe once every 30 seconds or once every minute. Um, in case of a truck trailer or shipping container, you could send the data once every hour, and that's good enough. If it's not moving, then you could send data once a day, just as a heartbeat. So, but the important thing is that these assets need to run on batteries for a very long time. And our belief is that the best solution is primary batteries that allow these units to run for one year, two year, five year, uh, time period um, and so that's that's one of the key challenges um, the other challenges are typically these are installed on assets that experience very harsh environmental conditions so think about containers and truck trailers and and not just environmental but otherwise as the containers are placed on ships or taken off ships 
um, they get banged around. And so you need units that are protected. You need units that are installed in a way that they can withstand these environmental and other harsh conditions. Uh, so those are probably the two of the, the biggest challenges. I mean, there's other challenges like um, making sure that you have a high probability of getting GPS signal. You have high probability of getting a cellular signal, so you can talk to the network and you can figure out where you are. And um, that's hard. I mean, that makes it a little more complicated. And, you know, we saw some of those problems with some creative positioning of the unit on these assets as well as um, using alternate technologies like Wi-Fi. And can you talk about how do you overcome these challenges? So, so the first one is, is the usage of primary batteries and managing the duty cycle so the end customer gets useful tracking information when he needs it. And at the same time, implementing good power management that allows the unit, the tracker unit, to extract high amounts of battery life in years because obviously if you need to send a guy to replace the battery every month, then that defeats the purpose. So, so, so one of the things we've done is implemented fine-grained power management that really takes into account the behavior of the key communication interfaces that are involved, GPS, GSM, GPRS, 3G, Wi-Fi, to make sure that we find ways to have these interfaces available the apps, then when they absolutely have to be available, but at the same time conserve power as much as possible. So that is one of the things that we've done, is to implement power management that allows us to achieve a battery life that runs into years. As far as the environmental conditions, so there's two things. One is that in designing the unit with uh, enclosure that meet IP67, IP68 specifications that allow the unit to withstand, you know, high uh, water submersion specs and essentially be able to um, be used in containers and trailers that are exposed to these these elements. Uh, second thing is to find ways to install this unit in on containers and trailers and other assets that protect the unit from getting you know, getting banged around uh, as these assets get installed, get moved around. So, and we've studied these assets and, and you know, found places where there are best ways to install this unit. And, and that is one of the key problems um, in in tracking these, uh, these kinds of uh, assets. And thanks, Vijay, for sharing your views today on tracking multimodal passive assets. You're welcome. Thank you for your time as well.